Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to being here wherever you are on our lovely planet. Yes. I'm Ariel. I'm Shia. And want to let you know right up front, we do finish each other's sentences. And we are not going anywhere. Oh, yes. We're not going to try to get you somewhere. We're not interested in fixing people or changing them. Although somewhere in the back of my mind, I wish people would behave a little better, but <laughs> that seems to be irrelevant to the moment. The fact is that we are not psychotherapeutic in our approach. We don't try to change or fix people. We are about the moment and about finding a way into the moment as a way of life rather than a thought process so that you experience the moment rather than think about how you should have been in the past moment or should be in some future moment. Today's topic is success. And I realize that when the topic of success comes out, we all have different internal metrics. And the one we're playing with today or investigating today or looking at is kindness. I really enjoyed the quote that we had uh, placed in the description, and I'm going to read it. There are three ways to ultimate success. The first way is kindness. The second way is to be kind. And the third way is to be kind. I didn't read it. Mr. Rogers. I, I didn't read it. I just said it. I liked it, though. It is kindness. It's being kind to yourself, mostly. Because if you're kind to yourself, you'll be kind to the people you interact with. You know, Shia started with talking about having an experience of being in the moment. And when you are experiencing, experiencing being in the moment, right along with it comes being kind. When you're experiencing being in the moment, you're not lost in a conversation with yourself about how to do your life right. What you should do, what you should have done, where you're going, your goals, your hopes, your aspirations. Those, you can still have those but they're, they're in the background, they're set aside. They aren't well, in the they're, foreground. They're actually not even in the background. They don't exist when you are in the moment. See, when That's you are, true. When you are in the current moment of your life, you do not have a conversation with yourself about how you look, how you're doing, where you're going, what you've accomplished. You're just being here in that ultimate place of satisfaction that exists in the moment. Now, everything else is an illusion. You know, this idea of some future moment when you'll be better is an illusion. The past is already gone. All there really is is the current moment of our lives. Now, you can waste it in complaint that it's not showing up the way you think it ought to, and your thinking is based on the programming of your culture. So <clears throat> you're ideas of how you should be keep you from being. And today, th this moment is an opportunity for your life to transform. It doesn't take anything. All it takes is being here. Mine is already transformed. I mean, I, I'm listening to you. Well, that's all it takes. I know that I have spent the last 39 plus years with Shia as my partner companion, uh, journeying on this adventure uh, that we call life. And yet, when I'm here and I'm listening, not looking at what I'm going to say next, not trying to get somewhere, but really hearing what you have to say, my life transforms. It's instantaneous. It's not something that I do. It's something that happens. And it includes any thought processes that might work on me falling away. They're just 
not here. I feel my body. All your worries are about the future. See? And so the reality is all there is is this moment. The future never gets here until it does. And if it does, it arrives as a moment of now. So if you can handle this moment, if you can discover how to live your life directly in the current moment you're in, then the future takes care of itself because it's going to come the way it does. And you have very little to do about that. I have a little bit to do about our future. Yes. I'm going to ask our first guest to join us. Okay. Renata, <clears throat> welcome to being here and tell people where you are zooming in from. Hello, here's Renata and I'm zooming in from Bern, Switzerland. Nice. Yeah, we are lucky today because we have very nice weather. <laughs> I, I was lucky that I could spend some time outside sitting on a bench and looking at the snowy mountains. <laughs> sitting in the sun. Uh, <laughs> and I guess it doesn't get better than that. I, I know our listeners might could hear it in your voice, but I can see it in your face, how lit up you are from um, being in your day. It's nice to be yeah. with you. Yeah, nice being with you. What can we do for you? Yeah. Um, I just have one sentence in my head, and that is, I surrendered. Well... So, that's nice. What does that mean to you? It means to me um, that I gave up fighting. I don't know that that is for, see, that sounds a little bit like a decision you've made. Well, it might be true in a moment, but it's like one of those realizations that you have where it's very true and, and juicy in the moment, but it's a little bit like, taking a juicy morsel of food and then tucking it in your back pocket and walking around with it for a couple of weeks, pretty soon it gets stinky. Yeah. Uh, so it's lovely that you've found your way to dissipate that fighting nature or to let it go or to step out of it. But if you hold as a truth over time, you won't be here to see when that impulse to fight Reemerges. Well, you see, let's look circumstantially. The mountains are covered with snow. The sun is out. It's relatively warm and you're basking in that sun. It's easy to be, how did you use the word? You surrendered to your life. It's easy to surrender to your life in that set of circumstances. But if the circumstances change in a way that you don't approve of, don't want, don't like, think ought to be different, I have a very strong suspicion you'll find your fighting nature come back. And that's not a problem. It's just at that you have a choice point. In this past week, we've spoken to people who have discovered they have a lifelong illness like Parkinson's. A number of people caught COVID. Another person discovered that their child has a rare genetic disorder that will affect her for the rest of her life, et cetera, et cetera. These are rather large, complex, complicated things that most people go, oh no, I was so careful. How did I get COVID? Um, or et cetera. And at that point, there's often the self-recrimination, the oh no factor, that automatic fight where you, you don't like, don't want the situation, your life as it is. But your life shows up exactly as it does, you see. And we have no control over how our lives show up. You know, this morning in Bern, Switzerland, the sun came out. Could it have not come out today? No, it had to come out today because it did. See, our lives show up exactly as they do. How we deal with those circumstances is up to us. We have a say in the matter. Now, normally, us normal people get upset when life doesn't go the way we want or would prefer. Or our boyfriend or girlfriend says, no, I don't like you. 
then suddenly all the happiness goes out the window. But maybe you have some say in the matter. Maybe you can allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and see what needs to be done rather than complain to yourself that it's not what you like, mm. not what you want. I just realized the last few days that um, these um, complaining voices in my head are not so often there. So that I, I spent days, the people on the show perhaps don't know that I moved to, uh, I moved together with my partner in August and I moved to a new town to Bern. And I have a lot of time I spent on, I spend on my own here. And in the beginning, there were so, so many um, times in a, in a day when I thought, oh, my partner is not doing that and she's not helping me and dra, 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 all these voices in my head and she, she should do that, she should do this, she should do it in this way or, oh, and yeah. So, and, and I just realized the last few days that those voices weren't there anymore. Yeah, weren't there well, anymore? That's very interesting, uh, Renata. Renata. That's very interesting in that when you engage in your life rather than your complaints about life, life shows up pretty good. You know, and it's so interesting because this, all this, you know, the news media uh, is, is all about disasters and illness and upset and world situations. You can use those to distract yourself from being in the excellence of the moment. I also love what you're describing. There's so many layers to it, Renata. What you're describing is transformation. You realized in retrospect that those voices are not there haranguing you, but talking you, to you. But you didn't say to yourself, I have to get rid of these I voices. I have to stop talking to myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then if we roll back to July, you had the idea when I move in with my partner, it, things will get better. And then you move in with your partner and you have the confrontation of new in the learning curve that comes with the area and actually living full time with a partner as opposed to having separate homes. And it's so easy to go into the, I don't like what she's doing, rather than to feel your own discomfort. And then you move through that and all of a sudden. Well, you allow yourself to experience the discomfort, all of a sudden you're comfortable. You know, and also during that time frame, at least early on and, and throughout, you or you and she have come to Living Made Easy seminars and you've challenged the idea that it was she making you uncomfortable. You've challenged the idea that the outside circumstances make you happy or make you unhappy. And in that respect, you've strengthened your ability to be able to sit in the sun and enjoy the mountains and the snow. Mm. And you know what? We have... Oops, she uh, froze. Say I'll it say again, again, please. Uh, we have great news. Esther and me uh, will be able to be to get married in, in next July. Oh, oh that's congratulations. great. Congratulations. It, it was just accepted in September that uh, the, we had a vote and the uh, people of Switzerland uh, said yes to the possibility that uh, same gender people can get married. And uh, we are one of the first couples applying, and it's the first day that it's the first day that we are that you can yeah that you are able to marry. It's the first of July, twenty twenty two, and we That's will great. marry on the first of July. That's great! That's Congratulations. That is really sweet. So I mentioned this because it was uh, this um, news or this decision in my life changed a lot. Like. To, 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 to good. I don't understand what you just said. So you're going to have to what explain it What do you mean it, it changed a lot? What, what to decision? Good. You mean so, to get married? 
the de decision to get married because uh, a long time of my life I, I was very skeptical against marriage yeah so well you just had not found the partner that you wanted to be with yeah that's one and point like, and, and also point? yeah <laughs> and i also gave gave up this this um, rigid picture of marriage not being something good or yeah well it's interesting as you talk and i know our listeners can't see your face but we can i doubt that that's the only area you've let go of your rigid pictures mm. <laughs> you know i find that our lives tend to be holistic it's not like we give up our rigid pictures in one area, we're just less rigid. And then when we look at that area, it, 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 we don't look through our rigidity glasses where we have a glasses about how things should be and we've been wearing them. And when you're not wearing them, you see wherever you turn your attention to in a more relaxed manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's when you relax, your world relaxes. Mm. <laughs> so I just wanted to say one thing. I want to back up to something Shai said to you earlier, um, because it, it's so lovely to be with you, and it's so lovely to see you well in yourself. But if you say to yourself, I've stopped fighting, you won't see it when it starts to reemerge. And then you'll hide it from yourself. And then the next thing you know, you'll be fighting and you'll think somehow you failed. Mm -hmm. uh, like, oh, I thought I was over that. Rather than recognizing that when that, that hardwired tendency to fight begins to emerge, it's like, ah, I must be upset or I missed something or... What am I not communicating? Or how am I trying to get ahead where I don't need to? It's always a symptom of something, not a problem. Yeah, that's good to know. Thank yeah. you. It's especially nice to hear when you're well, because it, it's easier. It's than easier to take when you're already well in yourself than when you are in the midst of an upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank you so much for being with us today. And, and please uh, send, send our love. Send our love and congratulations. To Astra. Yeah. Thank you. I will. Excellent. Thank you. All righty then. Drum roll, please. <laughs> you sound like our cat. It's time for our listener feedback spotlight while Shai is here purring with me. Uh, we get to hear from one of our listeners. About how transformation has impacted their lives. And if you'd like to learn more or register for any of our upcoming courses, uh, visit transformationmadeeasy.com. Yeah. And when I say easy, it's like the fire swamp. Yeah, join us. If you know your way through it, it's easy. <laughs> if you have a good guide, it's easy. If you don't, well, there's rodents of unusual size. <laughs> there's lightning sand. Oh, what's all the those. Thing? I don't remember. Oh, and the fire spurts. There right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> We're great guys. Transformation mm. made easy. Dot com. Hi, this is Michael from Hamburg, and I have just finished a podcast and could experience myself how great and refreshing it is to dive into a session of transformation. I had forgotten a little bit because I was so busy I hadn't taken part in a while and all of a sudden it was there and I could already feel the influence from this podcast <laughs> and I'm sure I will, I will take part again. I wish I could do next week already because I can feel the refreshment and yeah I can recommend it not only to myself but to all others as well thank you do you want to have well-being with consistency connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive living made easy virtual seminars 
join any of their two-hour online events, or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. When this episode airs, who knows if it'll be sunny and burn. Yeah, that's right. But whatever the weather is, wherever you are, we hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, upcoming, our next Living Made Easy seminars will be Monday, January 31st and Saturday, February 5th. Uh, also, because when this airs, we'll be in Costa Rica. That's right. So uh, if you'd like to attend a weekend with us. <clears throat> yes, our next weekend will be Passion Revitalize Your Life. Saturday and Sunday, March 5th and 6th. You know, when you go about your life with passion, everything is awesome. When you get lackluster, which can happen, everything is a drag. Well, you know, disappointments. People have expectations. They have ideas about what they prefer to have happen. And life shows up the way it does. And it usually uh, or frequently uh, is in... Uh, conflict with what people want well, that's part of why i am um, always have admiration for people like renata because you know she had the expectation that when she moved everything would be come together and be wonderful and then she had the challenge of merging Life. households and lifestyles and everything with esther and in that time she still she she pulled herself through by participating listening to podcasts, coming to seminars. Um, oh, and speaking of that, our next seminar after that weekend seminar is uh, April 29th through, through May 1st. So it's our, our, <clears throat> our first in a while, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's Leap Into Your Life in uh, Camp Tecumseh, which is here in New Jersey. So it's a residential weekend. Sleep away for big kids. That's right. You can find out more on our website, Transformation Made Easy. Easy. Dot com. Com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take Elka. Our next uh, guest is Elka. Welcome to being here. And please tell everyone where you're zooming in from. Welcome, Aria and Saya. I'm zooming in from Hamburg, Germany. Nice. Very good. Yeah. What can we do for you, Elka? Yeah. When I first read the quote, I thought, is it possible to, to have success only by being kind to yourself and to others? And I thought, oh, normally you have to, to work for it. You have to have luck, perhaps, uh, something like that. And um, I, I thought about my life and I thought that I always had somehow success with my family, with my profession. But also, how do I measure success? Is it more a business-like success or is it how you, how you feel in yourself? And in the moment, and that's a bit my question. I worked a long time as a gynecologist and I had registration freeze, is it like to say it, that we, we didn't take more patients because I had to do so much, too much patients. And now I'm working as a, a sexual counselor. It's a new business and I would, I could say that I'm successful because I see lots of, I see clients, not lots of, because I don't work so hard as before. And I'm happy while it's having my, my counsels, my speaking with my clients. And then there are parts where I'm, I don't feel as successful as I wanted to, like um, that I have less patience that I would think I would have, or also in this field of the social media. I'm doing an Instagram 
um, page and Instagram account. And I'm counting my followers. I'm waiting for more followers to come. And, and there's a certain, uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, I'm nervousness perhaps that uh, last week I had 400 and I felt happy, but it's only a number and it says nothing, but it's a kind of being, I want to be successful in this field as well. And is success, Alka, is it measured in numbers? See, there's a, a saying that I like, which is you can't get enough of what you really don't want. So you cannot satisfy your mind's need for more. So if when this airs, because we're, we're recording it a little bit, you've had this big jump and you suddenly have 800. You're not going to be more satisfied that that voracious part of your mind that always thinks more is no, better no, will no. not what, be satisfied 800 is nothing compared to some people no, have no. 8 billion you know <laughs> i mean and, and if you compare yourself to someone else you never find satisfaction yeah yeah i know that it's a bit silly but uh, and i think i would like to get rid of it this need to okay look how my yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. The first principle of instantaneous transformation is anything that you try to get rid of, you keep. So if you want to get rid of being uh, worried about numbers and thinking that more numbers would be better, then that's where you'll get lost. Living your life, just enjoying being you, that's success. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, if material possessions and wealth could bring people satisfaction and happiness, there'd be a lot of very happy people out there who aren't happy right now, even though they mm. have all the things they've tried to get. Well, let's do this. The last two principles of instantaneous transformation. So you count numbers and you don't want that. The more you don't want that, the more you focus on and I... Imagine you check your Instagram, which, by the way, is set up so that you do that, that they they figured out that your brain is addicted to that kind of thing and know how to get your interest in that. Second principle. You can only have 400 when you have 400, not 401. Life shows up exactly as it does at any given moment. And here's the third. Anything you see. Without judging. Without trying to change, fix, make it better or different, completes itself in an instant. Now, let's go back to the conversation we had with Renata. I imagine you were listening and mm -hmm. perhaps even listening closely. Yeah. She was talking about having sat out in the sun and on this day she's not fighting. Your concern with your success, your amount of productivity, your amount of clients, uh, is your version of fight. You mm -hmm. haven't caught that when you are lost there, you're not on your own personal center. And, you know, when you were a gynecologist, <clears throat> and you were with a patient and really there with them, you didn't worry about how many patients you had. No, not at all, no. Exactly. See, when you're where you are, the worries about the future disappear. Mm -hmm. When you are in the moment of your life, then it is perfect. And, and you're not distracted by what you think will be better. But when you're already off, when you're already out of sync with your life, that's when you get driven to look at the numbers to see how you're doing rather than to look into your own experience and feel how good it is to be you. Yeah. But you're also currently in the flip side of the coin. 
back when you were a gynecologist and you guys uh, limited how many people you would see, uh, it was because you had too many. Yeah. Now you have too little. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. I, uh, first of all, I think it's very lovely that you, you did limit the amount that you saw so that you could take care of the people when they came in rather than have to rush them through. Mm -hmm. But inherent in what, how you presented it was a complaint about how hard you worked back then. And now there's a complaint that there's not enough. And it's just the flip side of the same complaint. It's still the same complaint, you see. Mm -hmm. And then as you laid it out, you laid out a lot of different complexities, but this one stuck with me. Uh, you were, you posed something without really asking a question, but I'm going to answer the question that's behind it anyway. You were saying, well, success comes with really hard work. I don't know if it could come without hard work. Well, one of the things that I've discovered in our business and in our lives is, yes, we've done things in the past, like we've worked really hard to do certain things. But then my question is, was our success dependent on that hard work or what I considered hard work? Or was the, the difficulty of it something I added as I simply worked? And... Uh, I flashed on something back when you were a busy, busy, busy gynecologist many years ago. Shai and I came to a Hamburg to lead a course, and uh, I had some kind of vaginal infection, and you were kind enough on your lunch hour to make time to see me. Mm -hmm. A, was wonderful because we discovered that I was missing entirely the hormone of estrogen and it started me on the path of discovering what to do, which led me to bioidenticals, mm -hmm. et cetera. Uh, and, and my health came back incredibly out of that meeting. But also the whole gynecological system in Germany is different than the system in the United States. So I felt like in a moment, I learned something new. As a thank you, I gave you an orchid, which was really sweet to see you love. Not sweet that I gave it, although I suppose it was. But what was sweet was recently, you sent me a picture of that orchid still blooming. I say your success back then wasn't so much out of how much you did and who you saw and how hard you worked, it really included the kindness of your nature. And that's something that you have disregarded because it doesn't fit into your mental system of what true success looks like. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, Elka, I was, well, you know, I see you. And who you are now is so remarkably much younger than who I met 20 years ago in, in Hamburg. I think it was about 20 years. Yeah, nearly. Nearly 20 years. But yeah. <laughs> this person is so alive and who we met back then had the potential for this but yes. <laughs> but had a very, it was very um, tight. tight in herself, yeah. with herself, about herself. Rigid was a, the word that Renata used earlier. And, and you had been immersed. In that in rigidity, which was a cultural thing. Now you've discovered how to be yourself, which is not determined by the culture, really. No, no. When, so when Mr. Rogers talks about being kind, I don't know if you, I didn't know who Mr. Rogers was, but it, it, it was a child's program. Uh, it, it was, I believe, called In the Neighborhood with Mr. Rogers mm -hmm. and presented different things. But I, I was either grown, uh, so I never saw the show, but... Uh, being kind is key. You've done nothing wrong. 
You don't need yeah. to punish yourself for your life or past lives, you know. <laughs> your gynecological life, your early dating. Yeah. You know, there, there's something else, Elka. Uh, a number of years from now, you may look back and go, wow, I remember when I was wishing to be busier. That was really a lovely time. I know that you have time these days to go visit your growing granddaughter. Uh, you, you probably have time to even sit outside in the sun. Not that when you get really busy, you won't have that time. <laughs> there's something about allowing yourself to have your Instagram keep being about self-expression as opposed to having it be about numbers. You see, you can never have enough numbers to satisfy your mind. It's, it's yeah. based mm. in more, better, and different mm. rather than this is it. You know, Shai and I uh, work in advance so that on the first of the month, we put out a newsletter that includes videos and articles or blogs and announcements of what's upcoming. And recently a couple came to our house and uh, they said, oh, that blog you wrote was so amazing. The cat's even going, all right, yes. Uh, and I had to think for a moment because it was, I had prepared it in advance some mm -hmm. time to get it set up to be released. And they were talking to me about how they felt they were in the room with me, how they felt they were holding the cup of coffee with me, how they'd never been fly fishing, but they could follow it. It was like they were in the, mm -hmm. they felt mm -hmm. it. And I thought, that is success. They may be one of a few that read it. They may be one of many that read it. Mm -hmm. really for me a labor of love about expressing myself out into the world and including people in my experience so that they could have it should they wish mm -hmm. that's that's so nice you tell it yes and and i think i can feel these moments after uh, after having seen a client just when when they leave how yeah how successful it is how successful i am in this moment with them now, and here's uh, the other thing that you may not see you are successful just being you mm -hmm. not what you yes. produce what you produce is just a a byproduct of you being successful but if you base your success on what you produce then uh you'll find fault with yourself Mm -hmm. You know, recently a friend of ours uh, was in and out of the hospital. Uh, it was determined ultimately after many tests that he had a lot of plaque uh, leading to his heart and he was in the imminent mm -hmm. danger of a heart attack. And mm -hmm. so they kept him in until they could do a procedure, which he came through very well. But at the time, Shai and I sent him a WhatsApp. Uh, with our voices and we read a piece of the Billy Joel song just the way you are I'll take yeah. just the way you are which not only got uh, it was sung at our wedding but it's just so beautiful like just the way you are mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that that moment ends where you feel well with that person, you've had that exchange and in clicks in the drive of more, better, different. I have to do more. And that, and you've associated that I have to do more with your success in your gynecology. But what if there were many years that that drive to do more kept you from experiencing the deep satisfaction that's possible? See, and, and satisfaction is not complacency. 
satisfaction is well-being. It yeah. doesn't mean you have to stop there and never do anything else, but you're not driven to think that when you do something else, then you'll be successful. I agree. Thank you. Yes, I, I feel very warm now in myself. And uh, yes, I will not, don't go changing. That starts the song, I think. And uh, yeah, so, I, uh, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for Thank being you. with us today, yeah. Elka. Really a pleasure. Really lovely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you enjoyed the podcast, you can uh, leave a review, should you wish, on your favorite podcast app. It helps other people find being here. And if you feel to do it, thanks in advance. You can always share this with people as well. I find that from time to time, people start being hard on themselves. And simply listening to a podcast like this can relieve them of the burden of their busy, busy mind. Next week's podcast uh, is... You can learn something from everybody. Mm. We'll be back next week. So come on back. And don't miss, miss being, being here. here.